perfect so we live on youtube as well So folks who have just joined us in, uh, we've had some more hands showing up and guys, we'll be starting the webinar at the right time. Probably give a couple minutes more for some, some late entries to tune in as well. Uh, love the enthusiasm. Thanks, thanks for joining in beforehand. No, Benjamin, you're not, you're not that early. <laughs> it's good that you're already here. In fact, um, I and my uncle, we're looking forward to having some early conversations as well. So good to have some early hands up. So uh, by the way, uh, me and my uncle, we're both from uh, tuning in from Delhi, India, and we would love to know where you're all joining us in from. So by all means, feel free to type that in chat and we would love to know. Düsseldorf, Germany. Oh, good to see you. I just noticed that the YouTube stream is lagging behind by around 10 yes. seconds. Yes, that, that happens. That That's the delay that happens usually with uh, YouTube. Okay, we have Matt from Philippines. Hi, Matt. Good to see you virtually. I mean, I can't really see you, but yeah, <laughs> thanks for joining in. It's, it's great to know that people are, you know, able to join, uh, join from different corners of the world. I mean, that, that's the beauty of virtual events such as webinars. Something that earlier were often, you know, overlooked, but uh, the new normal has just made it, just made us adapt to the all the virtual meetings and conferences, webinars, so often that it's surprising now how it has become a part of our daily life. All right, we have John who works in New York, USA, but is currently settled in Savannah, Georgia, USA. Oh, hi, John, Thank, thanks for joining in. Uh, it's great to have you here. So we have people from Germany, Philippines, Savannah, so far. Awesome. Good to know. Some people are being shy. They're not letting us know about their native geographies, but that, that's okay. <laughs> so Mayank, while we're at it and we'll be waiting for a couple more minutes for a few more folks to join in. Uh, it's just something that a lot of people would be wondering about now. We know that, you know, this entire webinar is going to be about our latest offering, which is HyperExecute. But what, what, how did you come up with an idea? Because uh, a lot of people will be wondering, and we ourselves say that, you know, this is something that is exclusive to Lambda test, right? So yeah. briefly, what was the uh, Eureka moment for this? Absolutely. And it's quite interesting because, uh, all of the things and the features that we release at Lambda test are driven by our customer requirements. Uh, we do not go by our intuitions. We only go by the requirements that our customers have. And it's been uh, more than around three and a half years since we have been serving industry for test execution needs. And there was one thing that we noticed and that has been continuing for last like three and a half years. And that is whenever anybody moves their test execution to the cloud, they do face a lot of latency. Um, our engineering team uh, did great job in making our platform the world's fastest execution platform. But still, uh, the problem was that even though we are the fastest, we are not close to the local execution time. Now, whenever somebody who's running their test case on the local systems, that is around 2 to 2.5. 
no matter what how much concurrency do you run the test case i guess I... man we we lost the audibility from your end uh the audibility has to be fine uh I, for all of a sudden the voice it seems to be a little distorted and coming from far oh i'm so sorry i hope uh, it's perfect now better. perfect now yeah yeah so as i was telling about the problem is that uh, whenever anybody moves their test execution to the cloud they always face latency that cannot match their local execution speed and that prompted us to think that why can't we break this barrier why can't we provide all the features and all the benefits of the cloud execution but then at almost as same as native execution and that is what led us thinking into building a new product from the scratch from the grounds up using the first principle that can actually solve both of the problems and the result was hyper execute so as we'll talk in the demonstration uh, we'll get to know what makes it very very fast as close to as to native execution but then about the bigger picture why would anybody come to an orchestration platform like hyper execute so yeah that was a very brief about what prompted us and uh, what pricked us for last three and a half years like why can't we meet the local execution speed and yeah that's what gave rise to hyper execute yeah and i'm sure that's that's a pretty impressive feat to being able to run tests on cloud and matching it up with the speeds as you would get on your local system that that's quite commendable and i guess it's about time we hit the clock on the webinar as well uh let me could you confirm my if my screen is visible all right i i see you nodding yes yeah <laughs> cool uh okay so good morning good afternoon good evening to everyone who has joined us uh for this webinar uh this time we're going to look into lambda's latest offering hyper execute uh the webinar will talk about how you can orchestrate tests orchestrate tests better i'm sorry using hyper execute which we have built specifically keeping one problem statement in mind which is developer uh, which is about accelerating faster feedbacks from the developer end right and uh, today i have with me uh, mayank who is co-founder head of engineering at lambda test i am harshit paul product and growth manager at lambda test mayank has around uh, Mayank has been with the Lambda team almost since its inception. In fact, I too have been with the team from along around that time itself. And Mayank, it's been great working with you. Mayank overall has eight plus years of experience in the tech industry, and he has worked with high-paced growth startups, uh, you know, in building test automation systems from the ground up. So. today's agenda and before we get into the agenda let me just quickly take care of a few housekeeping items uh this webinar is fully recorded and in case uh, you know it's going to, it's going to be an hour long so in case you need to drop off at any point of time uh don't worry about it uh you will get an get a full recording of this webinar over your over to your registered email address and you can also find the recording of this entire session over to our youtube channel where we are streaming live at this point of time If you're not already subscribed to Lambda Test, make sure you go to the YouTube, search for Lambda Test, and hit the subscribe button because we release a lot of tutorials around automation testing, CI/CD, and thought thought leadership in general. So by all means, go ahead, search Lambda Test, subscribe if you already have not, and you can also find recording of our previous sessions which have been conducted. So, uh, and we uh, another housekeeping item to be taken care of is that we'll be having a dedicated FAQ round towards the end of this presentation, where we will try to answer as many questions as we can. And having said that, uh, let's hop into today's agenda. We will look about uh, on, on the areas that what makes uh, current test end-to-end -end test execution slow, right? What is test orchestration in general, and how is it different from test execution, right? How can enterprise achieve a faster go to market and why a hyper execute is a world class offering in itself offering world class features to the audience so before we get into hyper execute if you are getting to know about lambda for for the first time uh, we basically provide a test execution infrastructure on cloud with more than 3000 plus browsers and operating system and we do so so that you don't have to worry about maintaining and test infrastructure in house or building it from scratch and you can uh, 
leverage our cloud-based uh, platform in order to run your tests over a variety of browsers and operating systems in an instant. Currently, what we have with Lambda test is you will be able to test uh, live uh, in a live interactive environment. We call that real-time testing, where you have 3000 plus browser and operating system where you can select, just put in your URL, select whichever machine you want to test your particular website onto. And you can hit the start button and you'll get a machine which, will, which you'll be able to interact with in a live manner. We also have an automation cloud, which allows you to basically plug your automation test scripts from your local machines to our cloud, giving you the scalability that you need in order to expand your test coverage without having to worry about how many browsers operating systems you have installed with you locally. Or if you have your own device lab, you can ex expand that effortlessly by using our cloud-based capabilities and platform. We also have a real device cloud, which will allow you to basically plug in your uh, app development efforts and test it over a variety of iOS and Android devices. And of course, our latest offering that is HyperExecute for which I have Mayank with me, who's going to deep dive and take us from scratch into the nitty gritty of what it is and how it can benefit you, uh, accelerate your fast uh, feedback times uh, by multiple folds. So having said that, uh, as I talked about automation, these are some numbers. Uh, the frameworks that we support and or at automation offerings at this point of time are Selenium, Cypress, APM, Puppeteer, Playwright, and Test Cafe. We have 3,000 plus browsers and operating systems, as I've already said. Uh, we are trusted by 1 million users across the globe. 100 plus product integrations, 24 seven technical support in order to help you at any point of time. And of course, you get a lifetime free access to the product. So in case you have, you're not already signed to Lambda test, make sure that you go ahead and give it a shot. We also offer integrations uh, across different industries, be it bug cracking tools, be it uh, CICD, be it, automa uh, be it codeless automation or test reporting tools. We offer integration so that uh, you can narrow your uh, bridge between testing to development side as, as, and keep it as brief as possible. And having said that, uh, let's deep dive into the demo for HyperExecute and the overview of how it came to be and what it is that it does. So Mayank, uh, I'll hand it over to you now. I'll stop sharing. Yeah. Let me share my screen. I hope my screen is visible to you. Perfectly clear. Thank you so much. So Hyper Execute is an end to end test orchestration platform. And for the starters, we are providing all the major operating systems that is latest Windows, Macintosh, as well as Linux containers. And we allow to run any kind of end to end test cases over our platform. And as I mentioned in the starting about uh, the whole idea behind launching Hyper Execute was to meet your local execution speeds as well as at the same time provide the best features of the cloud. And the whole beauty about the cloud is that you do not have to maintain or manage any of the infra resources. Tomorrow, if new version of Chrome, Firefox, when the browser gets launched, you still have your cloud up to date without you spending any effort on the same. Now, we wanted to bring this exact similar kind of convenience to HyperExecute without compromising on any of the features that you were getting before. But then on top of that, we added a smart CI feature layer that I'll talk about later and blazing fast speed that is going to meet up your local execution speeds. Now, before we move ahead, let's take a moment to realize what makes traditional end-to-end -end testing solutions slow. And by solutions, I mean the traditional platforms. So whenever, for example, let's talk about Selenium test case and majority of them uh, do have similar kind of uh, fallbacks and, and the shortcomings. So in case of a Selenium test case, if I'm using a cloud-based test execution platform, what happens is that there are multiple hops in between before my web browser and the command is able to reach out to the target website. Now let's take an example. Uh, I am sitting in India and I want to test out a website that is sitting in Australia. What will happen is that my script, which is running on my local system or on my CA system is going to send out some HTTP based requests, which are actually Selenium APIs. 
these apis are being received by a component call hub that accepts all the commands and then which in turn schedules a virtual machine running a web browser now the virtual machine running this web browser is geographically separated from this hub component to make these services much more horizontally scalable as well as geographically available so the hub is going to transmit all the commands it's receiving from the client script back to this virtual machine having the web browser and finally that web browser is going to access your target website now you can see that for every single command it has to traverse through multiple hops now in the case that i just mentioned that i'm sitting in india and i have a website that is based in australia all of my commands are traversing the whole globe twice now in a typical end to end selenium test case we have hundreds of such commands and in a typical test suite we have like hundreds of such test cases now we can imagine that if i have to run all of these test cases at once how much time i am going to waste just uh, just to wait for the network response so all of my time the majority of time is just sitting idle and waiting for the network response to come back from the other end of the globe and not just that i'm not just getting slow my test cases are becoming even more flaky and that flakiness is not because of my test cases or my web asset it's because of the underlying platform even if one of the connection between these true hops is getting degraded my entire test suite can fail the reason is very simple because my test suite has never encountered this kind of an environment before so what happens is that many of time when our test case fails there are now three three culprits they can be three possible culprits it could be either my code it could be the website and then it could be a platform as well we had two problems before but now with the uh, traditional cloud based model i have three problems which is much worse condition than before and this is what makes the test execution over the standard solutions much slower than as compared to local systems let's talk about local systems first now as a developer or a tester if you are running an end to end selenium test case what happens is that all of the components like your script the hub the selenium components and the web browsers everything is sitting inside a single laptop and you run that test case everything happens natively right and that just gave us idea why can't we simulate the exact similar execution environment over the cloud over the benefit of the cloud so in the hyper execute one of the things that we first of all did was to put all of the components that are required to run the test case in a single virtual environment and when this happens three fourth of the hops now get collapsed into one the only network going out is to a website and just by doing this we are able to extract up to 60% of the performance benefits right how because as you see in the earlier slide we do not have to communicate over different geographical regions the communication between first three hops are now being covered inside a single virtual environment over local host local host is theoretically the fastest networking that we can get and in hyper execute we are able to utilize and harness that so we didn't just stop there i mean obviously you would imagine that what we are doing we are just putting every component in a single virtual machine and throwing such boxes in the cloud this does not solve the entire problem the problem becomes much more deeper when you think about the way people run their test case so the next thing that we did was uh, we added an orchestration layer on the top and i'll explain the further slides what it means between a difference between an orchestration and plain old execution environment but not just the orchestration platform as well there are much more optimizations that we have done in the underlying operating system and on the different components we have reengineered most of them so that we are able to extract out up to 70 or 80% performance benefits as compared to the traditional clouds but in actuality the traditional clouds are not even our competition we actually want to meet our local execution speeds and this is what we are able to achieve with hyper execute if i have to just explain you the kind of optimizations that we have uh, that we have done over the system if you uh, if you try to run a test case sequentially like multiple test cases sequentially on a local system the time between different test cases or consecutive test cases can range up to 4 or 5 seconds and the reason is very simple because the browser that is being used to run the test case will have to shut down and then start a new instance even this time the 4 and a 5 seconds is available on your local system but with hyper execute we have broken this wall and we have achieved the latency between stopping the last test case and starting the new test case up to 300 milliseconds and then you can imagine the kind of optimizations that you have done to speed and up your end to end test execution experience so 
whole premise of hyper executors uh, is not just about speed now. We did start with the speed as in the mind, but there were some bigger questions on the top. How do we bring you the faster feedback time? And the faster feedback time cannot be brought alone by just decreasing the execution time. It has to be much more than that. So most of the time that we spend on after running our test cases is to debug the failed ones. And that is what picked our attention again. So with hybrid execute, our whole, our whole game is to reduce it end to end feedback time. We want you to focus only on writing the test cases and leaving the rest to us. So let's talk about a typical cycle. What, uh, what a typical developer or a QA person does when they are trying to test out something, they author a test case and then they orchestrate those test cases. Orchestration means that you want to decide how many test cases and which test cases you want to run on which concurrent workers. So today, nobody runs their test cases sequentially. If they have hundreds of test cases, they are most probably paralyzing the test case. But then after in paralyzation, either you rely on a testing framework to distribute your test cases, or if you want to take manual control, you have to write your own code to orchestrate it. After orchestrating, either you have to uh, execute a test case and fire off that command to a remote cloud provider, just like even the land test standard grid, or you have to maintain your whole infra. And finally, after executing these test cases over that infra, you have to deprovision that infra if you're uh, manually doing it, or you have to call the cleanup scripts and then finally collect the data as well. So now, as I just mentioned, apart from actually writing a test case, there are lots of other activities that people are forced to spend their time on. This is where Hyper Execute wants to take away all the control. We want our users to just focus on crafting their test cases because that is what the core forte is. We do not want them to focus on how to provision infra, how to orchestrate, how to execute them efficiently, and how to collect back all the data. Because ultimately that's going to be a waste of time. So with Hyper Execute, uh, we just want a very simple onboarding for our end customers. And this is achieved by having a YAML file. Now we do not need to introduce world to the YAML. CICD has done an excellent job in telling people that what YAML file is. So just like keeping the same, uh, the same phenomena of int uh, or adding a configuration, we are having a YAML file in which our user has to tell what needs to run. And we have to focus here because in this YAML file, we're not asking our customer to tell how to run because this is what Hyper Execute does the best. The customer only tell what needs to be tested and then they download our CLI binary. They hit the CLI binary and it's going to abstract away almost everything. So you write the test case, you just create a YAML once. And after that, for every change, you just hit our CLI binary. Our CLI is going to create and provision the fresh infra, it's going to orchestrate, it's going to execute the test case, it's going to bring back the final results back to you. You don't have to even focus about it. And this is how we are going to change the market of end-to-end -end test execution. We just want our users to focus on writing more and more and better test cases. So at this point in time, I think I can take uh, you guys to a very small demo of how this actually works in practice. We have made an excellent onboarding page in which the creation of YAML is also simplified for the end users. And we have also put up various different examples for famous test, uh, testing frameworks, as you are seeing on the screen right now. So let's say you want to generate this YAML file for existing test cases. You could just choose a language in the framework, and then you have to answer some questions on the left. With every single change that you do on the left-hand side, your YAML is getting ready on the right. At any point in time, you can just copy this YAML file and put inside the root directory of a test uh, of a test folder, and that's it. So, what we typically ask for the user and how we allow you to configure is by uh, asking you from which system are you triggering the test cases, which on which system do you want to run your test cases. For trial accounts, we allow Windows and Linux machines, and Macintosh is available only for the paid accounts. And as a uh, and as a user, you uh, free user, you can actually run your test cases over over two concurrency. That means that you will be assigned two different virtual machines or container, or maybe a mix of both, as you may prefer. Hyper Execute also allows you to have a very fine grain control over your te testing durations as well. So let's say a mature organization has a policy that no test should run for more than ten minutes, for that matter. In that case, you can actually set up a timeout in Hyper Execute. 
What this will ensure is that if your any of the test cases is having more time in execution than 10 minutes, it's going to abort it there itself. So that you get very quick feedback that some of our test cases are going to breach your SLAs. And another feature is a retry. So hyper-execute allows you to retry only failed test scenarios. I'll talk more about it in the core orchestration features. And then finally, if you are not using any standard, uh, standard plugins or the frameworks, tomorrow if you decide that you want to roll out your own testing framework, you can actually integrate that as well. So hyper-execute does not have any tight coupling with any language or framework. Hyper-execute is very language and platform agnostic. We support Selenium, we have Playwright, we have Cypress support, we are we are having CDB support and Tyco support as well. And every week are rolling out examples to run various different kinds of frameworks. And tomorrow uh, you could also write any other kind of a testing script. It doesn't have to be just a web application. And that's the beauty of Hyper-Execute because Hyper-Execute is providing the complete and underlying infra. You don't have to just focus on writing web, web test cases. If there are some other scenarios in which you want access to underlying system properties, like for that matter, registry settings in Windows or maybe proxy setting in Macintosh, you're free to do that. You don't have to come to customer support and request some special features. This is all standard in Hyper Execute. So once this YAML is ready, all you need to do is to download this YAML into your root file and then trigger our CLI. This is what this Git pod example have actually done. So um, I'll go on the command that has been run over here. So this is a command. I hope this is a readable, Harsh Harshit. Yes, it's readable enough. Yes, clearly to me. In case it's not uh, readable to anybody, please feel free to drop us a message in the chat. Sure. We'll be able to find you. Thanks. So if you focus on this command, uh, what exactly doing is, uh, it's just asking for the path of that YAML file. And then there are some other parameters. You can, you need to pass your Lambda user and credential key and that's it. This is a very simple example of a web driver IO, um, how typical test cases are written. If you need to focus on the YAML file, I can show it over here. So what happens here is that I can actually also install my node modules and this comes under the core CI features. So not just you're able to run your test cases, you can run some commands that are required to set up a testing environment and we also allow you to run some commands after running your test cases. For example, generating analytics, generating reports, or sending out some API calls. After that, uh, some major directives in this YAML are telling hyper-execute to auto-split. Auto-split means we are going to distribute your test cases in the most uh, like most optimized manner. I'll talk about in the orchestration feature. But then you can also tell that you want to parallelize it over to different virtual machines or maybe containers. This is how, how you do it with the concurrency directive in a YAML file. There are various other parameters that you can use to customize your test execution up according to your needs. And our documentation has an excellent example of what all you can do over there. So I'll not cover uh, these various examples, but uh, the idea is clear that YAML is not very convoluted. It's all about the settings that you need to provide. And this is just one time activity. Once this YAML is there, all you need to do every time is just hit our CLI bandway. So at this point in time, our CLI was hit. And what's actually doing here? It's going to package up your test scripts. It's going to provision fresh infra, and it's going to put all your test scripts inside the machine. And it's happening behind the scenes for you. For every single time we hit our CLI, a unique link is generated for us to track the progress of that particular job. So if you're a command line friendly person, you can stay on the screen because uh, the CLI provides you very excellent insight in the real time. You get to know what, what's the current status, how many steps have been executed along with the time. And then at the end, it also provides you a great summary, how much time it took for every different stage and if the test uh, case execution passed or not. Now, if you just want to have some more further details, you could go on this particular link. I can open this page for you. So this is the main screen of hyper execute dashboard. And the whole focus, as I mentioned earlier, was to reduce the time it takes to debug and try a failed test case. So we asked this question to ourselves, why would somebody come to our platform if all the test cases are running perfectly fine? There's no reason. They'll only come to a platform in order to debug and try the failed test cases. And that's what our motive here is. 
you want to highlight the information as soon as possible to you so that you spend least time possible on the screen and focus more on your core work if you see here what happens is that we since we asked hyper execute to divide our test cases over two different virtual machines all these logs are segregated in a similar manner and the best part about hyper execute is that we have channelized the logs according to different stages now if you're not using hyper execute if you're using jenkins or any of the ci platform the bad part is that if you do not spend any effort or if you do not customize it all the logs are going to be scrambled into a single log file now it's the responsibility of the end user to scroll through these thousands of lines to figure out the correct section where they would find the information and this is what you want to change with the hyper execute as you can see in this section you only find logs that are for the pre steps no other logs so you know what you're looking at and if tomorrow if your pre step fails you know these are the only limited lines you need to look at you don't need to focus and worry about all of the lines of code and secondly for every single test execution we have segregated those logs now as you can see here uh, we have do provide logs in the real time for every single test case now if tomorrow this test case fails only this section has to be visited nothing else and the other part is that uh, with the traditional end to end testing solutions uh, these platforms only capture one half of the logs available that is a browser side so even our sand platform already shows various different kind of logs for example i can click on this link and it will take me to the place where i can see some browser related logs but the problem is that these browser related logs are not complete input for your triaging or debugging session you need to correlate these with the terminal logs that you used to get on your system or on a ci system but with hyper execute you don't have to jump between different platforms you have everything in a single place what you're seeing right now are the terminal logs that actually produce a stack trace if tomorrow your test case fails this is the place where you'll get the exact error and then you need to jump into see the browser logs so with hyper execute it's very easy you can just click on this link and you can go and see all the browser related logs over here so many for many of you who have been using lambda's platform this will be a familiar screen so this is what our standard automation tool provides if you don't use hyper execute we still have this video recording we have synced command logs we have various different kind of other logs if the if those are enabled just like this network logs but then this is just the half of the story how do you know what exactly and at what line your code got failed and that is why we have this very tight integration between this standard automation logs that we have and the hyper execute so if you click on this button you can go back to the exact place where you can find those terminal logs exactly here from where we started so this closes your debugging loop you stay in a single platform you have access to all the logs and this is where you will find your error case and this is exactly what makes your faster feedback times possible because obviously we are going to execute our test cases faster than any other platform outside but then we are also trying to reduce the time you spend on our platform by providing the exact logs so this was a very brief demo of what is possible with hyper execute test execution but then uh, there are lots of other convenience layers that we have added so i'll talk about in the presentation over here so as i mentioned uh, it's not just so just just a second my yeah. i'm sorry to interrupt so we are we are getting some questions in guys i would just like to focus on that uh, we will be having a dedicated q and a once the presentation is done where we'll be picking up these questions and answers in case you have any thoughts any suggestions or any question at all while we are presenting feel free to drop them in the chat or in the q and a box over the zoom and we'll be taking them up as soon as we wrap up the presentation thanks yeah please sure. go on so uh, hyper execute is not just for running your end to end selenium test cases it's about any other kind of end to end testing now we have some of our customers who need to access the underlying registry settings in windows and there are there are some customers who need to run a mysql instance on the same instance so hyper execute provides you the access to the complete underlying infra that means that you could run any process you could access any setting of the operating system and you can run any command that you want just like ci systems and we have made it very very easy for the end customer to customize a testing environment we have pre steps and the post steps in the yaml file that allow our users to exactly run some commands before and after the test cases 
So the, you can actually have various different kind of possibilities what what you can do with hyper execute. Some examples we are able to install certificates in runtime. We are able to run MySQL instances. We are able to generate some analytics after my test cases have been executed. And then I can also install a desktop application while my test cases are running. Apart from these, we have a very smart dependency caching. So we do understand that all the languages and the runtimes have their own package managers. Like there are uh, pip for Python, you have npm for Node uh, Node.js. So all these runtime uh, runtime packages are very, very heavy. So we know that uh, if you're downloading them once, it's going to take a long. So that is why our platform smartly caches them according to the manifest files. So the next time you're running your test case and you have the same manifest file, if you haven't changed it, our platform is going to automatically cache all the dependencies without you telling how to do that. And lots more CI features that allow you to access the underlying platform in the most comprehensive manner. I already showed you the real time logs for every different stage in the test case, which actually makes your testing experience very, very smooth and debugging experience very, very insightful. About test auto splitting, I'll just cover up in the next slide. Next is the automatic report generation. That's very, very interesting because lots of our customers spend a lot of effort in customizing their reports. So we thought like, why not the platform itself should be intelligent enough to provide you the most insightful reports. This is what you've done in hyper execute. So hyper execute has its own native reporting, which is going to be very, very insightful. And, uh, in the, in the next coming weeks, we're also going to roll out some features where customers will be able to customize it using various less options. But our goal is to actually provide everything out of the box with, that does not require any modification. So I can show you an example how this report looks like. So this is a downloadable HTML report that hyper execute generates for every single job. We have great information about uh, details of a testing framework. So for example, if you have a Cucumber based framework, we loop, list down the number of features and the number of test cases, the number of scenarios. We also have task analytics. This shows you how your test cases were distributed between different machines. We also have comprehensive information about the browsers, the operating systems. And we get uh, to a level deep if we are able, uh, if you're writing a Cucumber based test cases, we're able to provide you feature and scenario level logs that you typically get in your customized reports. So as a user, you don't even need to focus your attention on how to make these reports more consumable. This is what our platform does. So at the end of every job, you can download this HTML report either via CLI or from our API or from our dashboard and then send it across internal organization. We also have great support for artifacts management. Now, all of the test execution almost always create some kind of output files. In some cases, these are some videos, these are some JSON files or some CSV files. Since we are splitting the execution across various different nodes, we make it possible for the customer to generate and manage these artifacts automatically. So if your test scripts are generating some artifacts, our platform is going to automatically package them in a consumable package, which is available to download using our CLI or from our APIs. You don't have to manage these artifacts. So just like your CI systems, if your test is generating any of the artifacts, you will get it on a dashboard. And finally, the, the deep analytics. So we are actively working on this feature to make sure that tomorrow, if any test case fails, you don't even have to read the logs. Our machines and the platforms are automatically going to parse the logs and provide you the most insightful details without even you spending any effort on it. So tomorrow you start seeing when the test case fails, the type of error that occurred on the top without even you reading the logs. And that is going to make your triaging experience up to the next level. So let's talk about the orchestration features. Now I know I've been putting off this topic for too long now, so here we go. So what's the difference between orchestration and execution platform? Now, a very naive and blind execution platform will just throw in at the problem. Let's say you have thousand test cases to run. So you could go in a standard execution platform and you can say that I want hundred virtual machines or I want hundred containers. What that would do is just throw blindly in front of you. Now it's your responsibility to distribute these test cases in these machines. What will happen in most of the cases is that every virtual machine is going to take care of 10, 10 test cases each. Now let's talk about a real scenario. 
it's never the case that all of our test cases have a same execution time some test cases might run in hours other test cases could finish in minutes or seconds now if you are blindly distributing your test cases there might come a chance where all the long running test cases are scheduled together what will happen if all the one hour long test cases get scheduled in a single machine that machine is going to run for at least 10 hours all other virtual machines will finish their execution 30 minutes or 40 minutes even though all the test cases finished you are still forced to wait for this one virtual machine and trust me this is not possible for any human to manually orchestrate every time because on every commit or every change you do not know how much time this test case is going to take and this is where the role of orchestration platform comes in hyper execute is going to dynamically distribute all your test cases across the available nodes in the most efficient manner and how do we do this we have the entire history of all the test executions we exactly know how much time it used to take and what are the new parameters that you gave and by using deterministic analysis we are able to schedule these test cases on the nodes in the most efficient manner so that you don't have to do it every time you run your test cases our system is going to get much more intelligent after every run you are going to get much smarter results and this is where the orchestration comes in you cannot expect this feature from an execution platform or you cannot assign a human to do this job because it's not scalable tomorrow if you are going to run tens of thousands of test cases you're not going to optimize in the most efficient form and this is where hyper execute comes into the picture and solves your problem now let's talk about retrying of the failed test cases now out of this 100 test cases that you ran in the last time let's say your 67th test case failed you definitely do not want to rerun every test case or you do not want to rerun the job again so hyper execute has a feature where it's only going to run the failed test cases or failed scenarios x number of time and you can specify that in a yaml file now somebody could argue that today new testing frameworks have this feature in house or already built in but tomorrow if you move on to some other testing framework you lose this ability hyper execute is providing this functionality across all the languages and the frameworks so wherever you go this feature comes along with you you don't have to create this feature by your hand and you can just rely on our platform to automatically retry the fail scenario so that you can get to know about the flakiness of your test cases and finally the automatic reordering now let me explain how this actually works so let's let's again take that example of you running 100 test cases let's assume that your 99th test case failed so you go back you fix up this test case and then run a job again why do you want to wait till the first 99 execution get complete when you are only interested in knowing is my 99th test case still passing or not so hyper execute is going to smartly reorder your test cases so that your 99th test case runs the first and then followed by the other test cases so all the previously failing test cases are scheduled to the top automatically so that you can get your feedback faster much much faster and these are some of the features of what an orchestration platform does typically hyper execute there's there are much more smarter features in the background that helps the tester to use an orchestration platform as compared to a standard execution platform so we already saw a what yaml file looks like uh, this is another example uh, it's as simple as just providing some settings there are some couple of timeouts that i already explained and then uh, a notable mention for a matrix strategy many of times there's a case where you actually want to run a same test case or a same test suite but with different parameters now this is the best example that you just need to provide different parameters so instead of writing code by yourself you can use hyper execute matrix strategy you can define all the permutations and the combinations over here and hyper execute is going to run every single permutation in a single machine virtual machine so in this case there are going to be six different combinations if you multiply this matrix so hyper execute is going to uh, create six different virtual machines for windows and then it's going to run every single permutation in isolation over there that provides you great flexibility of trying out different combinations of the testing now talking about ci it's never the case that you run your test execution in isolation there are lots of tools in the platform that occur in your complete sdlc so you, we play really nicely with all of the existing tools hyper execute notably is going to be very very easy to integrate in any ci platform because it takes only two commands you just download a cli from a public url and then you hit that uh, cli that's it this is all it takes to integrate hyper execute with any of the existing ci platforms 
And finally, about the deployment options. The modern architecture of HyperExecute allows us to ship HyperExecute and run it in any of the major cloud platforms. So we have a shared cloud. We can provide you a dedicated cloud in which the whole infra will be dedicated to your organization. And we could also take HyperExecute to your on-prem. But on on-prem, we are supporting Azure, GCP, and Azure for now. We'll be adding support for more cloud providers later on. But these three clouds are majorly available today. So HyperExecute is much, much compact than the other solutions. And we are able to ship it out in various other different cloud providers. And finally, uh, mentioning about the emulators and simulators, we are bringing support in the last quarter of this year. And HyperExecute will be able to run mobile test cases as well using APM. So yeah, that was a very brief about what HyperExecute is, uh, including the demo part. Over to you, Harshil. Thank you. Thanks a lot for that uh, detailed overview, Mank. I'm sure our viewers loved it. We even have some quick questions coming in and we'll be picking them up really soon. Uh, just allow me a second uh, so that, you know, I can just give it a glance about the Lambda's platform in a whole as well to sure. everyone. Uh, so in case you've not used Lambda's in the past, this is how the platform would look like. And as we talked about uh, earlier in the presentation as to what we have with Lambda test, let me just quickly walk you through these offerings real quick. And as I said, we have live interactive testing with us. So that is basically this environment where you can come up, select from 3000 plus browsers or operating systems, choose particular screen resolution that you would want to test onto. And you can even add an extension into your browser in case that is a part of your testing scenario. And all you have to do is just select the browser, hit the start button, and within a matter of seconds, you will have a machine running in front of you just as quick as that. And you can switch environments from here. You can pretty much mark a bug from here. You can highlight wherever the bug is pointing out to. As uh, Mayank had already pointed out, and I too have conveyed it in the presentation early on, that we have a variety of integrations that are available with our platform in order to uh, ease your ta tasks in the SDLC. Uh, so you can mark a bug from wherever you uh, are coming along and whichever project management tool or bug integration tool or communication tool you have integrated with LAMP test, you can pretty much select the particular project, assign it to, that per uh, to the person who you want to assign it to, uh, create a bug type, fill in necessary information and just create an issue over here. And just like that, you'll be able to avoid the entire clutter of email chains and the hassle that you have to run back and forth with. Just all the information that you have provided just now will directly be reflected on the project management tool. You can change geographies, change screen, res screen resolutions from here, add more extensions if you would like. And most important is that you can, these are live machines, so you can actually go ahead and manually test whatever it is that you want to go ahead and test here from. As uh, you know, in app testing, we have emulator simulators over here, which will allow you to pretty much upload your app or you can test it via URL. In case you have something which is locally hosted in your system, you can leverage our tunnel in order to uh, you know run your locally hosted uh, web app or mobile app on to uh, the browsers and operating systems that we have on our cloud. So you can configure tunnel from here in case you don't have that already. And we also have real devices. Uh, you can perform live interactive testing with real devices, or you can automate them using APM and your preferred framework, right? So, okay. So I haven't run a script, probably I'll upgrade my plan for that. <laughs> and of course we have automation offering, which Mayank also had a chance to go through uh, initially as he was orchestrating and showcasing how hyper execute is ramping up on top of the automation offering that we have in order to bring all the logs in one place. And pretty much this is something that if you're already um, an automation user of Lambdas, you'll be familiar with that you have an entire video recording over here, timestamps for each command that gets executed in the browser. And you can pretty much route your video to that particular point, wherever the commands are being executed. In case you get any error, they will be highlighted over here. And what's really important is the analytics and the archives that helps you analyze your huge, uh, test suites and builds in the past in order to, if in case you have not executed any automation scripts on Lambda test uh, and you have something set up with you locally, all you need to do is just 
uh, configure your username, access key, and into your scripts and just plug it in with your desired capability browsers. So you will find those details over here. You need to just specify hub URL into your remote web driver path, plug in your username and access key, and define the capabilities over which you wish to run your test. For that, we have a handy utility which we call as uh, desired capability generator. And in case you're just starting off with automation, we have made onboarding as easy as Breeze. As you've seen in HyperExecute as well, you'll be able to get started with HyperExecute in a Jiffy. And similarly, you'll be able to get the desired in, uh, capability generator integrated into your automation dashboard in case you've not already executed the test. However, in case you get any questions or challenges, feel free to drop us a message. We are here to help you 24 seven. We would love to hear from you. We also have a handy utility which we call as the LT browser. It's basically a free utility and it allows you to test your mobile website in a side-by-side -side view over different uh, mobile devices. You can open developer tools. You can even look into Lighthouse metrics and check performance analysis of your website. We also have other offerings, for example, automated screenshot testing, which will basically allow you to capture full page screenshots of your website or web app over a variety of mobile and desktop browsers, and you can start capturing them. And at, at the similar time, you'll be able to, uh, okay. So just the URL over here and hit the capture button. And just like that, you'll be able to get these screenshots over multiple browsers and operating system in a Jiffy. And we also have smart testing, which will basically allow you to compare browser differences over a baseline image and a comparison image. We also have a slider mode over here, which will allow you to see pixel by pixel difference from one browser to another. So what you see on the left is your baseline browser, which is basically Chrome and on the right is the Firefox. So in that case, that happened. And let me also quickly take you to the integration scenario that we have with us. So, Now we have been boasting about the integrations for quite some time in this presentation. And I would like you to, you know, in case you're already signed up, just go through this tab. I'm sure you'll find it pretty fancy. And we have a huge collection of integrations with us across different types of tools, uh, be it bug tracker, project management, communication, CI, CD, in order to help facilitate, uh, facilitate continuous testing, codeless automation tools, test reporting, but in case, in case if there is any integration that you are you feel that we should add on to and are a part of your ecosystem, by all means, let us know through the chat window and we'll be taking that up in consideration. We work really hard on the customer feedback. That is something that Mayank has also emphasized. And in fact, HyperExecute is a result of all the customer feedbacks and challenges we have faced uh, since our inception. So having said that, some, some fun fact for you guys is HyperExecute is absolutely free to get started with, just like Lamtest. And you get 300 minutes and a 30 days trial exclusively for you. All you have to do is just drop us a message on the chat and we'll be able to open, up, open that up for you. As per to our automation offerings, uh, in case you've not already signed up with Lamtest, you can run our automation tests and uh, you get 100 minutes of automation testing free for our automation platform. At Lamtest, we love open source. So if you are already working on an open source project, make sure you claim your free access to HyperExecute or Lamtest as a whole. And these are some helpful links, which I will pass in the chat window right now, uh, now that we are done with the presentation. So you can, they, they're all around HyperExecute. So you feel free to go through them and uh, share us your thoughts or put, put your questions in the chat. Now we'll, we can deep dive into the Q&A now. So I'll stop sharing and I'll probably share these links in the chat. So we've had some questions coming in. Mayank, do you want to take some up? Any, any particular question that you find like you should be answering in one go at, at first. Absolutely. So, uh, I mean, uh, as I'm seeing the questions, uh, let's talk about how reliable is a test, Tyco testing tool. I think I'm starting on the order. 
so yes taiko is not used by many uh, people out there but still uh, taiko is a very simple cdb based testing tool and hyperexecute is able to support it because of its simplistic nature so yes we do believe that uh, taiko lacks some of the interesting features but we see it has a huge opportunity as well it is trying to simplify various different use cases so yes uh, we do support taiko and uh, we are trying to support as many use cases as possible with hype execute for that i hope that answered the question yeah let me pick up a very interesting question and it is basically a complex business workflow which has come from dias okay and he says that you know uh, the the workflow involves multiple mobile apps and web some steps will be executed in app 1 open app 2 and perform steps that is like an, another app will perform some other steps and some verification steps are done in the web layer while all of this is taking place mm-hmm. so he says that uh, i can perform this with browser stack they create multiple sessions and perform test cases but they create multiple sessions and we cannot get a single source of truth for this workflow do you see any possibility of bringing a single test session report even if we have test cases in multiple apps and web layer for example a single video which shows which steps run now which app on which app and finally shows single report on fail and pass absolutely dear yes. i mean these are like one of the interesting cases that we also been hearing from our customers so as we launch the mobile support then yes with hyper execute you will be able to see a consolidated report or a result for this kind of a complex session that involves multiple test sessions occurring in the same virtual machine or the same container so yes uh, like once we have the support for mobile devices definitely we can do this with hyper execute perfect i hope that answers in case it doesn't yes feel free to drop uh, a further question a follow up question on that so we have another question uh, this is this one is from benjamin is it possible to download the produced cucumber json files surefire xmls uh, etc through hyper execute api if we want to use our own reporting and logging solutions instead absolutely uh, this is what our uh, comprehensive artifact management does so yes uh, you have a way in which you can download all the generated files using our api and use your own custom reporting logic many of our customers use hyper execute artifact exactly for the same purpose right uh one more question from benjamin again uh, is all right where did the okay that is will parts of hyper execute be also available in normal lambda test automation product in the future or is it planned to keep it a completely separate product so hyper execute is a completely separate product but it's very tightly integrated with the entire lambda test suite of tools so uh, we don't uh, see any reason out there that uh, using it as a separate product will cause any uh, downsides but do let us know if you have any other expectation we would love to build something custom for you if that helps us other people in general but uh, we have seen multiple customers who are using hyper execute in addition to our existing tools as well and they find it very easy to integrate these completely different offerings together and uh, for the context uh, every single hyper execute license also provides you access to a standard platform as well so let's say you want to debug out something and instead of using hyper execute you could still use a standard automation with the same license so that just provides you much more flexibility and functionality great uh, one so basically diaz is saying in order to clarify is hyper execute uh, able to support app automate soon not now but as we launch the support for uh, immunity simulators in the mobile devices then yes great uh, okay benjamin is thanking for all the answers pleasure to have them answered benjamin we are here for that for a specific purpose so diaz uh, just want to extend that you know uh, you as i already showcased in the platform as well you will be able to automate applications with standard automation offerings of lambda test and you can do that via real devices or emulate simulators that is entirely upon your project requirements uh, but yes as mayank has emphasized we are planning to bring app testing in the road map of hyper execute as well in in the coming quarters so stay tuned feel free to drop us a reminder or two into our chat window and we'll, we'll be able to share the status of that and we have a question uh, this again another scenario while running salesforce scripts with any automation tools 
usually the browser the browser opens a new incognito window to execute the script in this case salesforce will send an otp for email to login but there is an option in salesforce to add a safe or basically whitelist an ip address so that it will not ask for an otp further my question is while we execute uh, in lambda test how this otp method can be skipped what the ip address for lambda test execution to add to salesforce for whitelisting okay mayank i guess we've lost your audio there oh, i'm yeah. so sorry i was on mute yeah so yeah um thanks for the questions and an interesting one and so much of the common use case as well so the answer depends on the which kind of platform you're using if you are using uh, the standard automation we do have a way to create a dedicated proxy for you which will have a single ip address so you can ask our customer support to create a dedicated proxy for you and then provide you the ip address in case of hyper execute we have a standard natting solution for every different organization so when you onboard and sign up we provide you three different ip addresses that you can safely whitelist and further after that all your test cases will be originating from that same ip address so you can safely whitelist and i think that will help you to skip that otp thing in case of salesforce i hope that answers your questions yeah i hope that does in case it doesn't feel free to drop us a follow up question on that that is for everyone and in case you have any further questions everyone please feel free to drop them in the chat and i guess we're closing in on the time as well this was a one hour webinar and uh, we we are 3 minutes short so basically in case you have any questions that you have uh, with you feel free to drop them up right now yeah all right i don't see anything else coming up let me confirm that once again i see something okay okay uh, so is it possible to share this recording please so yes the you will get the entire full recording emailed uh, to you on your registered email address through zoom you can also find the recording of this entire session over our youtube channel and of our previous webinars as well i have shared the link on the chat window for our youtube channel but let me do that once again real quick so in case you're not already subscribed to lambda test i'm saying that again go ahead subscribe it right now you're missing out on a lot of interesting things around the automation space and testing space in general and let me put that over here in the chat so you can find the entire recording of this session over our youtube channel and i've shared the url in the chat window dias uh, has a comment really great features guys looking forward to trying it out and we're looking forward to meeting you dias in uh, in case you have any questions and in case you have any suggestions for us so really appreciate uh, you know such comments and thoughts from you all thank you so much and i don't think we're getting anything further so mayank i think that that that's a wrap from our end and thank you so much everybody for joining us from different parts of the globe uh, it has been exciting meeting you and we've been looking forward we've been working day and night in order to bring hyper execute up to the uh, you know to the benchmark where we can go ahead and boast about it and right now we we're, we're doing exactly that mayank has led the entire uh, project from scratch from his behalf and thank you so much mayank uh, for for being on this webinar and showcasing the capabilities of the entire platform uh, of the entire product hyper execute as a whole thank you it was my pleasure talking to you all thank and you. benjamin benjamin has something which which is uh, it's not bragging if it is based on facts yes that that's actually that's absolutely correct so yes so uh, by all means go ahead feel free to give it a try and give lamb test a try as a platform in case you haven't and make sure you hit a demo button on hyper execute in case you need any help with uh, from our end in order to get started thank you so much for joining in everyone uh, happy testing and have a great day bye bye thank you bye bye